Gamer Dude 2088, and we're back for TOT 50. And I know a lot of people have been asking about this in the MMEG Discord, and it's taken me a while, but you know, we have this faceless dungeon EXP. I had to make a five star, you know. You know, I made my Sapphire five star, and we're taking on Sapphire today. Um, I, I I honestly did not even know what the TLT 50 boss was because when I was like doing my grind through TLT, um, when it reset, I, you know, I just put whatever little teams in when I felt a little bit of resistance, I put in a tankier unit or a heal or something like that. So when I got to 50, when I got to 50, I think I walked away or something. I went to go get it like a sandwich or something. And I came back and it was done. I didn't know what the boss was or anything. And I kept it moving. I know 60 was a problem. So that's why I put out that video first. But I hear a lot of people are getting stuck on 60. And let's see if we can help you get past this hump by whatever means we can possible. But mind you. When I do get, make these videos and I give you guys this advice, sometimes you might not have exactly the requirements that's needed. So it doesn't mean that you have to just like, all right, maybe I can just throw whatever on this unit and it'll work because it might not work like that. Sometimes you got to put in that work, do a little extra grind and get those stats where they need to be so you can come back and clear it, you know, with the grace of ease or at least clear it. But without any further ado, Let's talk about what's going on in this fight. Okay, you got the, the fire goblin shaman and that earth the minotaur, yeah, minotaur, whatever that you're dealing with. And these guys are applying some really nasty debuffs, the, uh, the mute, which is going to lock your unit skills from being used, which sucks. Not to mention the CC that the boss provides because it's going to use its third skill, Sapphire. Which he did. The Winter Breath attacks all enemies completely. Okay, sound it out. M. Empathies. Emp em okay, we, we, we just terrible right now. Completely. Two hours later. Empties. Yep, there we go. We got it. We got it. There we go. English. Yes, let's, let's do that. And a lot of you foreign guys. Or rather, a lot of you guys from the other side of the world or from other places always talk about, oh, I have poor English. No, it's my first language and I'm bad. But uh, anyway, attacks all enemies, completely empties their turn bar and freezes them for one turn. Actually, you know what? Ain't that something? It's not disappearing as soon as you pull it up. Thank you, Ubisoft. I appreciate that. And this is what's going to really... uh hurt you the most because you lose your turn bar on top of being frozen and we're going to uh, talk about what's going to help you with that then the second skill ice chasing attacks all enemies inflicting great damage and decreases the defense for two turns now i'm not sure exactly the damage the boss does or any of that but being defense broken is not good so we definitely don't want to deal with any of that stuff yeah i'm making a video all right, and then the first skill just attacks an enemy. So we, we don't want the the ads to do any of their shenanigans. So just like in every video, we want to uh, make sure we CC them as much as possible, keeping them locked down. This is why we got the Bassy Duel. You know, my, my blue buddy Hermit and his strange teal-looking color brother George. The Bassy Duel, you know, got to have Herman and George. If you don't have Herman and George, you're messing up. Now, you know, in my actual team, I'll probably bring, you know, my Sapphire instead of Herman. And, um, what would I, what I exchange for George? I don't know. I might even, I might end up, I might have George too or whatever else that I might bring, but, um, I'm bringing them to this fight. Now, I know some of you have had the problem of the boss moving first and taking you down. Well, to help you with that, um, based off of the unit that got the first turn, which is Herman. My Herman has 142 speed, and it looks like the boss will be moving probably right after, or either this Shaman, um, which is pretty close. No, actually, the closest one will be uh, George, and then... But, and I believe George is a hundred and forty 
41 or 42 and I believe he's like 140 so you definitely want to be over 140 speed for this fight if you want to be able to get the jump on the boss and its ads if you're not over that kind of speed you're definitely going to be in some trouble you and bringing a, uh, an immunity will uh, probably help you as well in this fight having that good old immunity is always good and things of that nature so I haven't tried it, you know, since I've actually cleared it using like my normal team. So I'm not sure exactly how this team is going to well, is going to work, especially using one of the new units, the Fire Kabir. I haven't really tested them out. I just finally leveled up through some random glyphs on them. It's not really all that great, but we'll see how how it fares in this fight. And since he has attribute disadvantage, I don't expect him to really live. But we want to see what we can do. And another important factor that I bring is the Chimera build stat because I haven't really been saying much about the staff bills but I I really should start talking about that because the Chimera is probably the best one and it's because of two factors that in my personal opinion is the possibility to purge which uh, is not really necessary for this fight and also the possibility to lower turn bars so if you have that first turn you able to get the boss turn bar or the ass turn bar lower that will be clutch coming into these kind of fights so that's what we're going to open up with i'm gonna just go ahead boom all right so we got a couple turn bars lower boss didn't get his lord but we're going to go ahead and see who, see if we can get everybody frozen all right, we miss one. That's not a good. That's not. That's not good. So we're in. We're in two situations right now because we missed our freeze on the shaman. Chances are he's going to mute the rest of us, which is going to be a problem. But we're still going to be frozen by the boss as well, which is also going to be a problem. But since we got the freeze on them, we might have a chance to. Uh, to survive, uh, to survive another term uh, of us being frozen and losing our attack bars as well. So we're going to go ahead and try to uh, CC him. All right, beautiful, beautiful. And our WHS is pretty good. So we're going to go ahead, get that, that done. And now we can start fighting. Okay. Now, from, now, I'm thinking the strategy that I'll probably want to implement for this is to take out the ads and then go uh, and then go boss. But I'm not sure. The boss probably decently squish. So I might can even go straight boss if I can keep the ad CC'd. So we want to see what we can do against the boss, especially since George has the elemental advantage. So, all right, we got a poison off. Now we're going to try to keep him locked down. We're going to try to... Do we want to do this again? Now we're going to go for... Try to get another poison. No poison. And we want to keep the boss under whatever forms of CC we can bring. So we have a little blind there that's going to help and use our Kabir. See if we can land a parasite. Yes, we got one. All right. Now tree. Give us some good old heals. We got George. CC him again. We need to make sure our, our Kabir is topped off, no matter what, because we want to keep him alive enough to do some serious damage. Alright, and we got them CC relatively decently, so let's kill the boss. Oh, oh we can't get his turn bar. Alright, so we missed a crit, that's not good. We gotta get George's crit up some more. I think it's like 93. It's decent. But uh, we definitely don't want to miss Chris. Uh, we just do some damage to him. Do some more damage. The boss is going to move. 
Alright, good, good, good. Let's pop these poisons. Now, I know everybody doesn't have Water Tree or WHS, but but if you do, you definitely want to bring definitely want to bring them in. I mean, really, really, at the same time, at the same time, even if you don't have the poison popping, you still going to dish out some damage. It's just going to take a little longer, as long as you got the right sustain and you know, Tree being the main healer in this fight. So that's that's what Tree's job is. Um, and I know everybody don't have WHS or a CDR, which is a cooldown reducer, but a lot of people do. I don't know if it's most or some or anything like that. But if you if you have any CDR, whether it's the Air Crusader, um, what's that? The Earth Zela, the uh, what's that? The the Water or Air Vampire, whichever one that brings the CDR. It's having having these in TOT is important. Is like critically important to have you a CDR and uh, NTOT. Can you get through it without? Probably. I don't know. I haven't tested without one. I don't know what that's like. Maybe in a future video I can explain that or talk about that. Oh, you resisted me. But I don't know as of right now. So we want to do our best to uh, provide you with ever great amount of content that you that that we can but heal some turn bars all right so these guys are starting to come back and now we can freeze again so let's go for that boom everybody's frozen and yo you got to make sure you got you got Herman skilled up to get his freeze on two turns because that's just like insanely important to have it's like I can't stress how important to have it on two turns the two turn freeze and we just have George stack some poisons and kill some turn bars as much as possible. And just keep them all locked as much as we can. I guess Tree could have went for it, but we ain't going to worry about that. Alright, so the CDR would be up in a turn. Um... So let's just remove this turn bar again. Oh, we didn't get the turn bar, but we did get the poison. Let's blind. All right, we got the blind. All right, he missed. We did some pretty good damage there. Pretty good damage. do that this is probably game from here we do that pop these poisons bam yep that's it from there so yeah once again i know everybody don't have water tree or any poison popper for that matter and you don't necessarily need a poison popper it does help tree is op i mean I'm, he's the best fucking bruiser in the game if you ask me he is, his dps is like unmatched by any unit. i don't care how much straight damage you got you can do nobody is messing with trees damage so you know get lucky pull the water tree that's all i gotta say but uh, really, it's just like, if you notice what I'm doing, I'm locking down these units, trying to keep them from doing anything. And um, you know, with uh, relatively easier to obtain units, I mean, the three stars, the, the three stars um, are easier for, for the general po uh, population of the community to be able to attain, even though everyone doesn't have them. There's still plenty of you that does. And then the two stars are more easier to attain. The new Fire Kabir is decent. I don't have any skill ups in him yet because I really want to see his full potential. Like this fight, you really couldn't see like really what he was doing because he didn't really do much. He just got one good parasite out and... I know he's going to be a lot better, so I'm gonna put some invest. I'm gonna invest in him some more because I really want to use him a lot more in TOT because I want to like run a more parasite 
and just see how that works, especially pairing him up with my Fire Faceless, which is my normal DPS uh, for TLT. He just taking his place for this video in particular. So let's go ahead, back out, and look at some stats real quick. If you guys not familiar with what my stats are on my units and my Fire Kabir as well, since he's newly built. So look at the, the Water Tree first. Um, decently tanky. Would like more resistance, but I had to sacrifice resistance to get him over a thousand defense and get his speed up some, especially because he was slower than my WHS, which I would love to have her faster. But I had to work everybody to get faster. But that 109 resistance, because if you notice, she resisted the freeze that the boss that the boss did. Um, and was able to pull out the cleanse. I know a lot of people like to do double meditation, but meditation procs relatively frequently. So I don't find I don't really think there's uh, there's a need for double med on her. I I prefer having more resistance. So this is why I have the the endurance glyphs as well as a resistance glyph on her. Let's just go to that too. This the one, no, that's the defense, as well as a resistance glyph on her. I mean, I, and it's it's funny because I keep resistance glyphs, but I don't use resistance glyphs on anything but her. And, and I think if it's going to be like your main cleanser, having some having having that kind of resistance is important. And having over a hundred percent resistance, like if you have a hundred or more, you're going to resist a lot of debuffs quite often especially in these kind of clutch uh scenarios so some of these bosses that's giving you problems that's completely ccing you i'm my team is practically surviving just off of one resist from whs and if uh you don't get the resist right off well come back try it again because these fights are supposed to be hard because this was like the end game content before we got the raid so it's like the mid to late game content now so for you earlier game players or early pushing into the mid game is like, uh, don't be discouraged and feel like you can't get through it, but you can. You just got to get the right stats. That's really all this is a game of stats. Get the stat requirements and it all shall come. We just five starred our sapphire. Look at you. You so cute. You so cute, sapphire. Okay, let's move on. Herman. Herman, like I said, 142 speed. I believe the boss is probably 138, 139, or something like that, based off of uh, the speed of all of all of my uh, units. Not used to the Kabir. <laughs> Definitely passed him up. It was right next to Sapphire. But uh, this is Herman stats again. 92 accuracy. Um, if you're not uh, familiar with my Stat, stat requirements as far as accuracy goes, generally that 80% mark is like a base minimum. If you're coming in, it coming into TOT with anything less than that, um, good luck at getting past 40, 50 at, 50 at the most. Good luck with that because the further you go, the more accuracy you're going to need. So that base um, 80% would definitely carry you halfway through TOT if not further. But also, also try to go higher. Try to go higher. But that's just the base minimum. And I think that 140 mark is a good mark to have because that gets you halfway through as well. 140, that's on the speed. On the speed, but definitely would like to get higher on uh, my units as well. I, I would actually like Herman to be it's probably as fast as Sapphire because Sapphire is 149. Which I like Sapphire higher. If I can get them over 150, that would be nuts. That would be beautiful. That's probably the only reason I don't play around with him more so now. And inst instead of using Sapphire. Because, I mean, accuracy-wise, he does a better job than Sapphire does. But, um, alright. Let's look at our Fire Kabir. Uh, we got 135 speed, uh... Not the not the best speed wise, but uh, it's decent. It's decent. Wait a second, he was gonna move. He was gonna move before the boss. I think he moved before the boss. You should know when you're watching the video. Come come back. Let me come back and say something. I think he moved before. I think the fire could be removed before the boss. Yeah, at 135 speed. So the boss is not that fast. Mm -hmm. Then he's like 140. So. You definitely want to be over a hundred and four. If one hundred and thirty-five speed is outspeeding, then the boss have to be have to be 
uh, about 130 or so or something like that. And you can see my glyphs is not even leveled up on them. Like, I, um, I didn't have the crystals when I was putting them together and everything, so I don't even have glyphs really leveled. I do this quite often, too. I'll come in with half level glyphs on units and just be clearing content and shit. I mean, this is something I already passed, so that doesn't matter as much, but we got a 80... Uh, seven accuracy on him which is pretty decent i believe he evos into accuracy as well uh we got a pretty solid accuracy glyph i really love this glyph this this is like probably my best accuracy glyph this percent is crazy and on top of it it has seven speed it's like oh my god yes yes because we don't i think seven is probably one of our better ones on our main account and too bad once i once we get uh our free glyph removal. He probably won't keep these glyphs. I'm probably gonna move them around to something else. Then he probably have be on a different build. But if if not, he is still have those glyphs. And was that the whole team? Oh yeah, and George. George sitting at 93% crit rate. We see we, we missed one crit, which wasn't that bad. So, you know, shooting for that same thing about that 80% on the crit rate side. Uh, looking, looking at it now, I would probably, I would probably say, yeah, 80% get you about halfway decently. But if you can get to 100% or better, then definitely shoot for those kind of, those kind of stats. Uh, Herman is, I mean, not Herman, but George is definitely, rough to rough to uh glyph because he needs so many stats and you see he's relatively squishy all the bassless family is really squishy so the goal is to not let them get hit at all and if they do have them with at least enough stats to take at least one hit at an attribute disadvantage hopefully hopefully and if you can't just get the stats that's important you know the speed uh yeah he is at 140 um, George needs the crit rate and definitely needs more accuracy. You can notice that I was missing a lot of uh, poisons and I think a couple uh, turn bar uh, reductions. I missed this missed as well, and that's due to having low accuracy. But this is a decent decent benchmark for accuracy, especially since the crit is more important. He must crit. He must crit. So even if you can't get uh, a lot of accuracy, just get as much as you can. And make sure he's able to uh able to crit. But I say shoot for about sixty percent on the accuracy side if you can for him, and a and a hundred percent crit if you can get that. But um at the base minimum, this forty one, we'll say forty percent, and uh, eighty percent will probably be decent to get you halfway through uh TLT effectively before you start running into a lot of problems with uh, resistance and uh, missing crits when missing crit means you lose a unit. <laughs> And I believe that is it. Yeah, that is it. That's the team right there, what I did and everything. Um So, you know, shoot for those shoot for those stats to get higher. Um like I was saying before, if you can get like an immunity unit or something, like uh fire druid, earth, cyclops, water What's that? Colossus, whatever kind of a unit that has immunity, uh, and get them fast enough to out uh, to outspeed and pop the immunity to survive that first turn, then you should be good to go there. It's like if you got to strip your booster or whatever, have your fastest gliss. If you have gliss fast enough, if if not, get that get you some decent resistance. And if you can't get the resistance to work out right, you know, go back to those dungeons, man. Grind, pull some good glyphs, man, and uh, come back, come back later, come back later, try it out later. You don't you can get a whole month to do it, so it's like it's not like it's a dire need to just rush through, uh, rush through it unless you're just procrastinating like I do a lot of times, and it's like the last minute you rush through, you try to rush through. But for the most part, man, it's like make sure you are getting the stats you need to clear and that's what most of you out there are missing you are not getting the stats you need or you don't have the right strategy to implement um and sometimes you have the units you have the units because like if you see me in the mm eg discord and the uh, tot chat because that's where i hang out mostly 
you will see that I'm always like sending. I, I will send my video to you privately. Like I was chatting and talking and stuff like that um in the chat, but I might say things here and there. But now I just send the send the video straight to you. So some of you are going to probably have this video in your inbox if you miss it because I'm going to post it. I'm going to post it and everything so everybody can see. But if you um, but if you do miss it, miss it or whatever um. Yeah, you definitely will have it in your inbox. And uh, if you didn't see this video and you missed it and you're in the chat in the MMEG Discord, you definitely will have it in your inbox. But if uh, you do see this video, you get to learn and figure out some some stuff to help you clear through. I'm rambling now. I'm, I'm pretty much done here. Um, if there's anything that I forgot, if anybody has any extra input that they can uh, apply, please do. You know, it's all about helping the community out and everything. So this is the Gamer Dude signing out. I hope this video was educational in some kind of way. Help you kind of guide you into the right direction in TOT progression. Not just this fight. And we're just going to call it quits here. Deuces. Gamer Dude 2088. And we're back for... Uh, another episode of T.O. Uh, no, try this again.